Hello, it's the Queen of Creeps here, and we're back with this little creepypasta soap opera. And this is actually take two of me recording this, because I just realised that my bedroom window was open and my neighbours were outside. So, yeah, that was a bit embarrassing. Um, so I've decided, after like all the good feedback I got on the last video, that I'm going to carry on as I was in the last one and like upload this in ten minute time slots and doing like two chapters, or... If, you know, the chapters are too short, then I'm going to do three chapters. But yeah, um, and I'm going to have to remember how to do these voices. So wish me luck, guys. So let's delve into chapter three. <clears throat> that was one of the best dinners I had ever had. Ben and I played Legend of Zelda till 8.30. After he beat me at every game we played, I sat and talked with Jack, Hoodie and Slenderman with smile on my lap. I assure you, miss, said Slenderman. Miss Kennel, I replied, but you may call me Erica. Ah, Erica, I hope you understand that we can't send those pictures you took to the government. For fuck's sake, Smile Dog has never been caught on camera before. It would expose us to the overworld, he said, shifting his place. We can take you home tonight if you wish. What? No, I'm having so much fun. Really? Yeah, I feel at home here. Well, that's good. You may stay as long as you like. Really? That's awesome! So what, you're not gonna like... How old are you? Because your parents are gonna be worried about you or something. Um, overall, it was one of the best nights of my life. I put down my controller and stood up, stretching my cramped legs. Oh, can't you play just one more round? Pleaded Ben. What? Round? <laughs> what do you mean? Legend of Zelda isn't like a combat game. So you'd beat everybody else up. It's like, you just do quests and stuff. <clears throat> nah, I'm too tired. Walking up to my room, I heard that music again. That sad, lovely violin playing. This time, I decided to check it out. I cautiously opened the door to reveal such a depressing sight. Oh my god. <clears throat> Masky was perched on the end of his four-poster bed gently sliding a bow across the soft, fine strings of a beautiful violin. It would have looked lovely if Maskey's frustration wasn't getting the better of him. Every time he played the concerto again, he paused at a certain part and said, Um, oh shit, what was Maskey's voice? It's like, um, Why won't my fingers play this one note? Or, Slendy's not going to be impressed! The sight, sad as it was, was also quite beautiful, as a matter of fact, for many reasons. Boo, you hot. <laughs> the bedroom window was open, letting cool air blow Maskey's hair in different directions. The moonlight poured over his masked face like liquid. Right, um, <clears throat> his long, slender, like slender man, <laughs> fuck's sake, um, his long, slender musician's fingers caressed the neck of the violin, as if it were the only thing he lived for. He picked up the bow he had dropped in frustration and placed it on the violin strings. Taking a deep breath, he slid the bow back and forth, creating gorgeous sound that made the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. I could feel the goosebumps raising on my arms. I was so speechless. I could have stayed unnoticed for hours, but Maskey put down his bow and lifted his mask, making me gasp quite loudly. <gasps> Maskey almost immediately snapped his head around. His reflexes were outstanding. I could have fainted. <laughs> Why, the most beautiful, absolute gorgeous boy I've ever seen in my life was standing before me. He had lush, wavy, dark brown hair, a flawless pale white complexion, and bright, bright blue eyes that sparkled with devotion. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Once he realised I could see him, he carefully placed his violin on the bed behind him and frantically fumbled around for his mask. Um, hi, Erica, he managed to say as he slipped his mask back on his head with shaky fingers. Uh, hi, Masky. I don't mean to interrupt anything. I'll just go... No, he said before I closed the door. I mean, you can stay if you like. It gets lonely up here. Jeff throws parties in his room. Ben gets Jack and Udi in his room to play video games. But no one ever visits me, except for Slendy, I mean Slenderman. He's always giving me wake-up calls. I see. Ha ha. <laughs> okay, next chapter. <laughs> it's literally just, I see. Ha ha. Okay, chapter four. 
I sat down on Maskey's bed and picked up a photo frame I found sitting on his nightstand. It contained a photograph of everyone in the house and more. Maskey was on Maskey was on the side next to Hoodie. Jeff was holding up bunny ears behind Ben. Oh, this is just not accurate. Um, and Jack was pulling one of Slenderman's tendrils. They all looked pretty happy. Hehe, <laughs> I remember that day, said Maskey, gazing at the photograph. He looked kind of depressed. It made me curious. How well? Excuse me? How well do you remember that day? Pretty well. Let's see. His hands folded in his lap as his brain strained to remember the date of the photograph. It was the 13th of August 2004. I was 11. That was the first time I shot a bow and arrow. It landed dead in the centre. I can't believe you can remember a day that occurred seven years ago. How could I forget the best day of my life? His gaze drifted from my eyes back to the open window. Oh, now it's Maskey's point of view. I'm going to have to do his voice now for the whole thing. <clears throat> the trees outside my window were swaying silently in the wind. I wondered if there was any leftover cheesecake in the refrigerator. <laughs> Erica, I asked. Yes? Would you come down to the living room with me, please? Of course! I offered sorry, um, I offered her my hand and she took it. I led her down to the living room where Ben had found a new video game partner. Hoodie was beating Ben at every game they played. Ah! shouted Ben, throwing the controller at the television screen. Whoa, Ben, I said, no need to rage. Ha ha ha! Erica exploded with laughter. It was hilarious. Ben was turning purple with anger and Hoodie was having a laughing fit on the sofa. I kept slipping out of the voice. Jeez. Now it's Hoodie's point of view. I think the voice I'm doing for Maskey was Hoodie's voice, so... I'll do, um... Fuck, what should I do? Um... Right, let's just do something. Be right back, said Maskey. <laughs> yeah, let's just do American. Walking briskly into the bathroom. Um... I don't even know who's speaking. Hey, Ben? Yeah? Has Maskey taken his pills today? Um, no, I think he's taking them now. I just, I can't make the voices consistent. Are you sure? Pretty sure. I'll check. I took off to the bathroom and knocked on the door. Hey, Maskey, can you be... <laughs> I can't read. Hey, Maskey, have you taken those pills today? No, I can't find them. I opened the door to see Maskey frantically searching the medicine cabinet. His mask had fallen to the floor and his face was contorted with anxiety and I've slipped into Maskey's voice now. <laughs> what he did next had me scared sick. Maskey dropped to the ground and was back against the wall. He was coughing so hard there were tears running down his face, though I don't think he noticed. It was so hard watching my best friend, who was like my brother, having a coughing fit on the cold, hard tile bathroom floor with his limbs spasming in odd directions. And all I could do after calling for Slendy was watch and wait for help. Hey, Hoodie, said Erica, coming down to the hall with a wireless gaming controller in my hand. Wanna play Maskey? <laughs> Wanna play Maskey, apparently. She immediately dropped to her knees beside him and tried to keep him still. Don't touch him! I yelled suddenly. All we can do is wait for Slendy to bring the anesthetic! <laughs> the creepy bastard monsters just have random anesthetic with them. She stood up and leant against my shoulder, sobbing softly. Maskey was beginning to settle, but that wasn't a good thing. His movement was decreasing, yet so was his breathing. Slenderman, hurry up! At that moment, Slendy entered the room with a needle in his hand. He unzipped Maskey's jacket and pushed the needle deep into Maskey's forearm. After a few seconds, Maskey stopped moving completely. And that's chapter four. <laughs> what a fucking cliffhanger. <laughs> I'm not going to read this until I next until I next start recording it. Like, this is a cliffhanger for all of us. We're going to find out what happens on the next episode and it's going to be good. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Sorry for all the inconsistent voices. And yeah, see you next time, whenever that will be. Bye!